corporations funding riots that destroy small businesses. That's what this is, the lockdown, and then the riots, and all of it is to demoralize you. In that Project Veritas internal Antifa video, what does he say? We want to make you depressed. We want to make them sad. We don't want them saying rah, rah, America. We want them to give up. We want to demoralize them. That's all this is, the ugly art, the ugly literature, the drag queen story times, pedophiles going after your kids, dudes dressed like women on the street simulating cutting babies out of their stomachs, all the ugly TV, all the murder, all the death, all the drugs, all the fentanyl, all of the suicide is designed to demoralize you. How many times did we say they're going to try to cause a civil war and call it an insurrection and try to overthrow local government till things fall apart and then demand Trump be driven from office saying he allowed this to happen, he caused this to happen, he's unfit to command? That's been the blueprint of Antifa funded by Soros. That's been the blueprint of Black Lives Matter funded by the Democratic Party. It's all the same group. And Republicans would say, Jones, they'll never get away with that. Oh, come on. Ha, 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 ha. 2016, Antifa wasn't able to do that. That was a beta test. If you look at the Google trends, as our guest Hotep Jesus brought up yesterday, 2016, the Black Lives Matter Antifa blip was 20% of what it is now. It is a massive off the charts spike. And look at these headlines. Are we on the brink of revolution? And they're telling us, revolutions burning your local community and killing cops oh you're gonna have a lot more cops when they're done boy let me tell you movement to defund police gains unprecedented support across u.s london guardian la mayor slashes lapd budget as calls to defund police slowly pick up steams minneapolis council members consider disbanding the police aclu sues over police force protesters near white house vegas defunds the police 100 million we're going to cover it all and how it ties in to the end game. But this is an authoritarian model, 100%. All over the United States, in blue cities and blue zones, the, the mayors and the police chiefs are globalist, following the Soros UN playbook, and they're saying, the police are bad, stand down, don't stop rioters, don't stop looters. When somebody comes in somebody's business and physically attacks them and robs them and they shoot them, the police come and arrest them, like in Omaha. The guy was being attacked in his business. He shot the guy, and they arrested him. This is a plan to take down civilization. That's why it's happening in Australia. It's happening in Europe. It's happening in the U.K. It's happening everywhere in Canada because it's about the communist promised at the universities that you're taking over. They went and got these degrees to be part of the cult. They go get the liberal arts education. But Tucker Carlson, there's a big article on Infowars.com that lays it all out, just gets better and better as times get worse and worse. It brings out the best and strong people. He lays out that mega corporations are the ones financing Nike and PepsiCo and all the rest of them. Yeah, let's put it back on screen, please. Again, there it is, uh, corporations funding riots that destroy small businesses. And it's such an important article. I'm going to read it at the start of the next hour and then continue with your phone calls. But that's what this is, the lockdown and then the riots and all of it is to demoralize you. In that Project Veritas internal Antifa video, what does he say? We want to make you depressed. We want to make them sad. We don't want them saying rah, rah, America. We want them to give up. We want to demoralize them. That's all this is, the ugly art, the ugly literature, the drag queen story times, pedophiles going after your kids, dudes dressed like women on the street simulating cutting babies out of their stomachs, all the ugly TV, all the murder, all the death, all the drugs, all the fentanyl, all of the suicide is designed to demoralize you. That's all it is, and they admit it is. So don't let them demoralize you. Go out when they say they're going to beat you up if you have free speech, and you defend yourself when they attack you.
go out and support freedom and, and build others up and understand that we're not going under learned helplessness here. But look at this article out of Australia, and the very same thing is done at Evergreen College in, on the West Coast and other colleges around the country where they teach people that whites are inherently bad, and it's communist white professors literally teaching people that this is the way to go, and now they've actually found black people around the country to actually now lead these events, countless videos telling them, you are inherently bad because you are white, and you are to serve black people and keep your mouth shut. This is the official Black Lives Matter of Melbourne. Again, they bring in populations from outside the area, teach the populations to hate each other, and then say police, even though most of them are minority in Melbourne, aren't even allowed to carry out their job or they're racist. So you make the invading force the victim. Important information for this Saturday protest is officially put out by Black Lives Matter with 40,000 members. White folks guide to protesting, copy and paste, do not share. If you are a white person, consider joining a protest this week. Here is a list of rules put together for you. Friends of color, if they have forgotten anything, please add. Number one, follow calls only. Do not initiate or lead calls. That means keep your mouth shut. Your job is to follow and add your voice when it is called for. Number two, do not take selfies. Ask to take pictures or videos of individuals you are there to witness only. Film the police as much as possible. Your goal is documentation to ensure the true narrative is told. Number three, be helpful. Hand out water and snacks. Make sure protest leaders are hydrated and fed. Oh, take care of the leaders. This is exhausting work. Help keep their energy up. Number four, follow directions. If a black person tells you to do something, you do it immediately without question. You respect the authority and the decisions of the black protesters at all times. This is a new class system. Number five, stay in the back until you are called forward. If you hear white people to the front, white people to the front or allies to the front, step forward and link arms with other white people to form a human shield. <laughs> Man, this is incredible. Number six, when you are at the front, you are silent. This is in all caps. When you are at the front, you are silent. I should have been reading this right. Stay in the back until you are called. Follow directions. Follow calls only. Do not take selfies. Remain calm at all times. This is difficult work. You will be emotional and your system will be flooded with adrenaline. Remember, this is life and death for the protesters. Save your emotions for home. Do not agitate. This is not a game. Joining a protest is a serious decision. Make sure you are there for the right reason. Support the safety of black protesters at all times. Copy and paste only. Is that clear, scumbag? <laughs> they didn't have that part. This is cult brainwashing, and this is standard operating procedure. Look at this poor little three-year-old white girl told she's privileged and bad by her very parents. That's how sick and evil this is, and it just goes on from there. I'll cover more of this after I take your phone calls. But then, meanwhile, revealed Philadelphia police told to protect rioters, not neighborhoods. That's now official. Los Angeles to strip over $100 million from police budget, redirect to communities of color. Churches are being robbed across Europe by the Islamists. It's all there. But the thing I wanted to hit after I take your phone calls is this, the way mob rule works to create martial law atmosphere so that if Trump doesn't act, we go under leftist martial law regardless, just like they did with the leftist cities activating to shut down all the facilities. So Trump had to then act or it looked like he was not caring about the COVID. That's the psychology. Well, now we have martial law by mob rule by, and by the left and by the blue cities doing nothing. So when Trump acts, he's a fascist. When he doesn't act, he's bad. This is the plan to drive him out, 25th Amendment. All right, we're going to come right back, ladies and gentlemen, and go right to your phone calls directly. And then I've got the Tucker Carlson piece that is so critical. And I've got this breakdown 
of how the New World Order actually operates and how to stop them. And then I said I'd get to it this hour. I'll have to get to it towards the end of the next hour. The official world government plan to bring in total collapse permanently and how great it is has been announced by the Davos Group. It's called the Great Reset. We'll be right back. Stay with us. All right, folks, Alex Jones, your host here back live. We're going right to your phone calls. If I seem irritable and upset, it has nothing to do with the crew. I am just so angry that this is actually happening worldwide. They are trying to overthrow local governments to break down civilization so that the, ma the major central banks can come in and take control. And, and that's their admitted plan. That's in the World Bank and IMF documents that came out in 2002 that Greg Palace and the BBC released. But since then, these mega corporations have taken over all the media and you just don't see this information anywhere except out of the mouths of the Club of Rome, of the Davos Group, and of the big corporations. That's why you see every major corporation, from Walmart to PepsiCo to Nike, coming out and saying, we do not support traditional families, they're bad. And it's good to break up civilization. Glad you guys found that. Print me that article. I said 2002. That's when it went super viral, I guess. Broke in 2001 in April. But they actually got the IMF World Bank documents where they go in and foment rioting and distressed economies and, and foment things with the media. Then things collapse, and then the real police state comes in. This is so incredibly cold-blooded. All right, I'm going to go to your phone calls, and then next hour I'm going to hit these definitions and how they tie into this. Oligarchy. The definition of oligarchy. The definition of terrorism. The definition of slavery. The definition of submission. The definition of blockade. The definition of siege. The definition of learned helplessness and how they're using this on us. The social contract, the Milgram experiment, the Stanford prison experiment, Stockholm syndrome. You understand this, you understand exactly what these psychological warfare experts are doing, but what did Tucker Carlson hit last night? Quotes from Black Lives Matter saying we are here to end the traditional family. What have they done to the black community already by design that destroyed the black community? They destroyed the family. And now the mission of Black Lives Matter is Planned Parenthood. Abort the black babies, break up the black families, and abort your babies and break your ass up too. It's pure evil. They're running a pirate flag on us. They're run by a lying criminal named Bill Gates. Ocracy. Latin for mob rule in the rule of government by mob or mass of people or the intimidation of legitimate authorities. But really, I find that oligarchs will actually create the mob to then overthrow the legitimate government and bring them into power. So I find that oligarchies grow out of the anarchy of mob rule. And our founders were more worried about that than anything else. An incredible document was brought to my attention by one of the crew yesterday. And then I went and read the actual full document last night, and I suggest you do as well. It's on the Davos Group website. It's on the UN website. Now is the time for the Great Reset. And right here it says carbon taxes, a new type of capitalism, changing our lifestyles, learning to be poor, to stop greenhouse gases, getting rid of fossil fuels, basically mass death, ladies and gentlemen. And how COVID taught us as an opportunity how to do this and how to give up our lifestyles. This, the trillion dollar companies are telling us that own slave camps in China. You have the head of the Davos group saying, the pandemic represents a rare but narrow window of opportunity to reflect, re-examine, and reset our world. And they go over the plan. And they talk about getting rid of the family, which is the bedrock of civilization. 
So they say they want to help you, but if you read the IMF and World Bank documents that Greg Palast got in 2001 at the BBC, it's a 21-part plan, but it's four steps he breaks it into, how they'll come into a conservative, libertarian, liberal government, they don't care. But if it's legitimate and prospering, they will finance uprisings, police crises, and start overthrowing cities, start having an anti-government sentiment, and finally implode the country, overthrow it, and then bring in IMF and World Bank control, and then martial law. And so that is what they are engineering. But they say it's all such a nice, good, loving thing. And John Perkins of the Economic Hitman exposed that as well. But here's Tucker Carlson talking about PepsiCo, talking about Nike that owns the slave factories. They're the moral authority like Apple. Oh, you actually have millions in slave camps? I mean, it's in the news that Apple has slave camps at the Uyghur facilities for the Muslims building uh, iPhone components. But it's like, buddy's Tim Cook. I mean, it's okay, right? I mean, if he was a Republican, that'd be terrible. Tucker Carlson knocked it out of the park again last night. There's full videos on Infowars.com. I suggest you share it. Tucker, corporations funding riots that destroy small businesses. And he goes on and admit they're targeting the family. Here's part of the report city that's really been turned upside down by the riots but and you've heard this a lot recently riots are the voice of the unheard how dare you criticize them you're hearing that message from virtually every american corporation right now every university every major media outlet the rioters burning down your city with the support of virtually everyone richer than you are are quote unheard you by contrast are the oppressor and if you disagree in any way we're going to fire you and wreck your life but corporations aren't simply tweeting their support for the riots. They're paying for them, too. Recently, the CEO of Cisco announced that his company is donating $5 million to the Black Lives Matter Foundation. Airbnb is donating half a million dollars. So is Dropbox. Video game maker Ubisoft is giving $100,000. Intel has pledged a million dollars to assorted anti-racism groups and is pressuring its employees to donate more of their money to the foundation, the Black Lives Matter Foundation. And then there's Pepsi. Pepsi's donating too. This revolution is brought to you by your local PepsiCo bottler. Tired after a long day of looting? Try Pepsi. So the question is, now that it's getting all this corporate money, what exactly does the Black Lives Matter Foundation believe? Well, less than a week ago, the group launched a petition to defund all police departments nationwide. The group's co-founder, Patrice Cullors, says we should abolish all prisons. So does Intel want 1.7 million felons released onto America's streets? So they want all 700,000 cops fired tomorrow? It's not clear what they want, but they're paying for that. Maybe they think they can look good for the mob by funding the cause. Who knows what they want, but they're responsible for this. On the other hand, the foundation says, the Black Lives Matter Foundation says, that one of its other goals is to, quote, disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure. Well, that's certainly a goal major corporations can get behind. People who aren't encumbered by families won't be distracted from being the dutiful little worker bees they like most. Married children, stop! Get back to work. Some companies are donating to or encouraging employees to donate to the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. Right now, that group's Twitter page denies that the riots even exist. and Instead, they're blaming police for the violence. Okay. The NAACP fund is also promoting bail funds. Those get violent rioters out of jail immediately. So with all this money flowing out of this country's most profitable corporations, it might be a nice gesture for those corporations to donate some money to, I don't know, rebuild some of the small businesses that have been destroyed over the past week. There are a lot of them. They desperately need the help. Oh, but they're not going to do that. Because for a lot of big corporations, the total annihilation of small businesses is one of the best parts of this new revolution. There's always an angle. Someone's always getting more powerful. And by the way, it's not just big corporations. Tomorrow we will name the celebrities who are donating to get the looters, the destroyers, the violent thugs out of prison so they can keep doing it. Be sure to catch that. We have the list. All right. More of that is in the story at Newswars.com. I suggest you share it. And, and that's the truth. This is all cold-blooded mega corporations that have the worst slave factories on earth actually have factories next to death camps on record and suicide nets around them prancing around skipping around 
like evil elves telling you that they love black people. Meanwhile, Trump put $100 billion into black communities for new businesses. And what was it, another $50 billion into black colleges last time I checked? Doubling the funding over the next four years. None of that matters. He wants to kill black people. He's a KKK member. And, and let's all just kill each other. But when you go out to one of these events, it's 90% white meth head people. And I'm not against white people, but I mean, I'm ashamed though that where are they growing these white people? Because they look like they got grown with a bunch of mushrooms or something. I mean, they, they're they dull-eyed. They they look like zombies. They're ugly. They're, uh, well, you've seen the videos. I'm not exaggerating. These people look like a big spiritual spider stuck a straw in their soul and sucked it out. They're in a trance. You heard a caller earlier. A lady called. I forget her name. She said it's like they're under MK Ultra. They are under MK Ultra. They are mass programmed first in the colleges and the universities that they are the elite, they are the rulers, they're the ones that care, they're the good people. And then they get caught into that and well, things just keep getting worse and, and, and things keep falling apart under globalism. So it, it's not globalism's fault, it's America's fault and it's white people's fault. And if we would all just say that we were bad, that we could fix the world. Meanwhile, Xi Jinping literally owns four of the six big Hollywood production houses that have turned out hundreds of movies. Every major star has made one, Matthew McConaughey, everybody, about how white people are bad, and but white people lead an uprising of black people to kill the white people. This is all a sick, psychotic joke by these dirtbags because Hollywood and the New World Order have been held unaccountable. But guess what, Bill Gates? You're all over the news whining that people hate you because we know you ran Jeffrey Epstein's pedo operation, you slimy maggot. The United States is under attack. Our country's not perfect, but it's our nation and has a Bill of Rights and Constitution. It's been very successful and has been the number one country where the average person has a chance to become successful and to become happy and to live out their dreams. Powerful multinational corporations that exploit human populations all over the world to levels beyond any horror movie or H.P. Lovecraft novel are the very ones now setting up this tyranny in America and knowing that we care about race relations and knowing that we care and that we have a basic Christian ethos still, they play on that and say, you're racist, you're bad. And when out of 350 million people, something sad happens to somebody at the hands of police officers like George Floyd, even if they're all charged, and even if they all go to prison, it doesn't matter, it's your fault because you're white. But it's white billionaires controlling things, saying that they want to divert from their crimes, their corruption, their illegal surveillance of the population on to telling us that we're all individually bad. And now after three months of a lockdown and top scientists coming out and saying COVID-19 is a giant hoax designed to destroy the economy, now they move on to destroying the economy with looting and rioting and race war. It is absolutely evil. And now Senator Cotton of Arkansas has come out and said that President Trump is absolutely right. We should invoke the Insurrection Act because all over the United States, more than 20 states run by blue governors and blue cities say riot, kill, attack, and will not call out the National Guard so the police are overwhelmed. This is an attempt to further stall the economy and bring down the country. And this will hurt the most disadvantaged Americans the most. And this is a diabolical crime that absolutely must be punished. The Justice Department has announced its opening criminal investigation of who's behind Antifa. Soros and Alexander Soros and these organizations they fund like refusefascism.org are the groups that run this. We have all the documents. We have all the proof, friends of democracy. These are the organizations that operated under Obama and the Clintons with impunity and are engaging in a massive criminal takeover. But we've got General Mattis and George W. Bush and all and, and George Will that said he didn't care about the primaries for Trump, that it should be overridden. 
because the plurality of the people didn't matter. These are monsters, and they're launching this attack on you and your rights and your freedom, and they're deadly dangerous. So see the chessboard and see that they're using you as a pawn and decide not to play their game. Expose the entire game with the truth, with the justice, with freedom.